Hey everyone, it's Peter. It's Sunday, March 29. We've made it through another week, a very challenging week, a difficult week for some. I'm continuing to record these video messages that are posted on Facebook on Sunday mornings. The link is in the description, or alternatively, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel for these and archived messages that are located there. I want to continue to reflect with you on how this pandemic is inviting us to consider what God is doing in our lives and how we can experience a closeness with God in and through all of the difficulties that we find ourselves in. And so this morning I want to reflect with you on the will of God. Last week it was the peace of God and today the will of God. It's an enormous topic. It's a deep mystery. Of course, our minds aren't able to comprehend the will of God, but there are some things that we can know about it. And I want to read just one verse from Romans 8 that will anchor our reflections this morning. Romans 8, verse 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. It's a very famous verse. It's a verse that... uh, Many people take incredible comfort in. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. That invites us to reflect on how that happens, how God's will is actively present and working itself out in all things, including this pandemic. Many years ago, I found a a little book in a used bookstore. It's a collection of sermons, originally preached by a man named Leslie Weatherhead, He was a prolific preacher and writer. He served as the pastor of City Temple in London, England. And sermons that he preached during the Second World War were especially meaningful and comforting to people because they lived at a time that is very similar to the world that we live in today. They had a lot of fear. They had a lot of concerns about what the future would be like. Sermons that became published as The Will of God, that's the title of this little volume that I found, were originally preached in 1944 in London, England. This was the time when Londoners were experiencing the Blitz, so much devastation and death and uncertainty. Leslie Weatherhead preached about the will of God in such a way that I have always found it to be very compelling, and I want to share that with you today. He broke down the incredibly huge concept of the will of God into three separate categories. He said the will of God has got three components. There is an intentional will, there is a circumstantial will, and there is an ultimate will. Now that might sound technical and hard to to grasp um, immediately, but I'm going to break that down and reflect on that with you, and I've got a great illustration that I think will make it especially clear. So an intentional will, a circumstantial will, and an ultimate will. Here's what he meant by that. The intentional will of God. The Bible makes this very clear. God is good. God is perfect. God is love. God intends only what is right and good and true and perfect for his creation. And so this pandemic and all other signs of disease and famine and war and all the things that we see in the world that are that are troublesome, that's not part of God's will. God doesn't desire that for anyone. He doesn't desire for any creature that he's made to experience pain or suffering or death, God wants creation to thrive and flourish. That's the intentional will of God. So why doesn't that happen? Well, that brings us to the second component of the will of God, the circumstantial will. The intentions of God are restricted. They are thwarted. They are prevented in the world that we live in, because the world is no longer what it once was. When God created the world in the beginning, it was perfect. It was pristine. Every element of creation lived in harmony with each other and with God. But the world that was once perfect is a fallen world, which means there are enemy forces that have invaded God's good creation to corrupt, to prevent God's will from happening, And this is something that Romans 8 also talks about. Paul there in that chapter talks about how the entire creation is is frustrated. It can't live out God's ultimate or intentional purposes. It's in bondage 
because the powers of evil enslave it. We see that very clearly in this pandemic. You know, I was thinking about this the other day, how the pandemic that we are currently living in affects every level of society. There's almost nothing that is uh, unaffected by COVID-19. You think of education, you think of business, you think of family life, you think of a global economy, everything, literally, is affected by this pandemic. And that is an illustration of the pervasiveness of sin, how devastating it is, how it corrupts everything in God's good world. And so God's intentional will is prevented, it is corrupted. He can't accomplish what he wants, given the fact that there are so many enemy forces in the world that resists what God wants to do. There is, however, finally, the ultimate will of God. And this is the word of hope that I want to share with you today. Ultimately, God does have the victory. God's will is accomplished in and through all of the brokenness and pain of this world that we inhabit. So God's intentional will is frustrated. Creation is held in bondage. It has this groan of enslavement and difficulty, of pain and death. But that does not prevent God from finally and fully accomplishing his will, his ultimate will. Romans 8 also talks about that, how the creation, which is now in bondage, will one day finally be liberated from its decay and will be full of the glory of God. So there is the intentional will, the circumstantial will, and the ultimate will. Here's the illustration that I think makes it clear. In Enterprise, Alabama, there is a statue in the center of town. I hope to go to Enterprise, Alabama one day myself and see this. Uh, of course, we can't do that now, but at some, some point, I would love to see this statue that I've read about. You can see it online. If you just do a search for Enterprise Statue, it'll come up. So what is this statue in the center of town? Well, it's a statue of a woman, and she's holding above her head a, a platter with a pedestal on it. And I'll say what's on that platter in a moment, but to set that up, I want to just... Uh, talk about how enterprise, like so much of the American South in the 19th century, was a thriving uh, place. It, it was flourishing. The economy was booming because they produced something that was incredibly lucrative. Cotton. King Cotton, it was called. It's said that the uh, southern states uh, at this time, for a period in the uh, 19th century, produced more money and had an economy that was thriving more than any other place in the world at that time. But there was something that came along that devastated it. A little bug, a boll weevil, migrated up from Mexico and wiped out over two-thirds of the cotton industry. So an economy that was previously flourishing was all of a sudden decimated. What were people to do? Well, they had to find a, another crop that they could produce, one that would not be affected by the boll weevil. Lo and behold, they discovered that they could switch from cotton to another industry that would be just as lucrative. And in fact, it proved to be even more lucrative than cotton. They grew peanuts. Peanuts were not only impervious to the scourge of the boll weevil, they once again made that economy soar even greater than it was previously. And so when people discovered that they were once again uh, flourishing, they said, you know, we, we ought to celebrate this somehow. And so this statue in Enterprise, Alabama was erected. And what's on top of that platter that this woman in the statue is hoisting above her head? It's a boll weevil. That bug that was once the source of incredible pain and loss is now being venerated. Why did they do this? Well, the inscription at the base of the statue helps us understand. In profound appreciation of the bull weevil and what it has done as the herald of prosperity, this monument was erected by the citizens of Enterprise, Coffee County, Alabama, December 11, 1919. It's been said it's the only statue that has ever been erected to honor a bug. <laughs> 
So here's how this illustration makes Leslie Weatherhead's breakdown of the will of God a little more clear. The residents of Enterprise, Alabama had an intentional will. They wanted to produce something that would benefit society. They wanted to make money. They wanted to contribute to the well-being of, of society. That's what they intended. The circumstances, however, prevented that from happening because the boll weevil made it difficult, if not impossible, for them to continue to grow cotton. Ultimately, their intended will was accomplished, but in a different way not with cotton, but with peanuts. And so here we see how God's will is similarly at work in the world. His intended will, working out in the circumstances that are painful and difficult and ultimately being accomplished in a different way, but a victorious way. And so this verse in Romans 8, verse 28, we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him is a great verse. And I'm indebted to Fleming Rutledge, who in a sermon on Romans 8 points out that this verse really needs to be understand, understood correctly. It's somewhat ambiguous. It can be translated differently. Some translations, such as the King James Version, has all things working together for good. All things. It's a slight difference, but it's an enormous difference when you think about it between saying all things work together or God is at work in all things. And Fleming Rutledge points out that the latter is the better translation because it's not as if things just have a way of resolving themselves. Things will just work out. Sometimes we say that to people. Don't worry. Things will be okay. Our focus is not on things, not on the circumstances that we are dealing with. No, our focus is on God. God is the subject of the verb. God is at work in all things. That's the hope of this verse. And Romans 8 celebrates that um, throughout the whole chapter of, of how God is at work in the brokenness and decay of creation in the person of Jesus Christ to accomplish his ultimate will, the liberation of creation, setting us free from the bondage that we currently experience to sin and death. Romans 8 announces that there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. That means COVID-19 can't separate us from the love of God. Death cannot separate us from the love of God because in all of these circumstances, God is at work to accomplish his will. And so I hope that these reflections give you hope today, encouragement. How is God speaking to you in this pandemic? Where do you see God at work in all of the things that we find so difficult how is God bringing health and hope and healing in this situation that is so dreadful and frightening? God is with us. God is in this. God is working to accomplish his purposes. I hope that you feel the presence and the power of God at work in you today. It's a difficult time. We can't underestimate it. But God is with us. God's will, while it is being pre prevented, cannot be overcome. God is God. The creation is his. He is Lord. The will of God ultimately is not something we have to try to figure out. We can simply rest in it. We can trust it. We can know that God is with us and is working to accomplish his good purposes for his glory and for our good. I hope this has been encouraging to you. I pray that you are well and I pray that God will bless you.